Hello, everybody, and welcome back to day four of the playing stage here at Worlds 2017. We are turning towards our next game of the day. It is Chaos Latin Gamers versus Young Generation. Now, let's get things started by looking at the players fighting for their world's lives right now. KLG, of course, is going to be on one of the sides. I don't even know what side they're on. I'm going to check it out later because in the top lane, we've got Mantaraya in the jungle. It's Tearwolf, Plugo on the mid, Fix in the bot lane with support slow, and their coach, Pierre. And aiming to disrupt the group standings, it's Young Generation on the other side. In the top lane, it's now Nocti. Jungle, it's going to be Venus. Mid lane is Na. Big Koro is your ADC, and Pallet is your support. Followed by Twonku, the coach. Absolutely. So yeah, now the first time these guys faced off, Young Generation looked completely outclassed after a landing phase that was okay-ish. Uh, a lot of mistakes. I mean, that said, it was Young Generation that was pressing the envelope. You know, it was really that big, deep mid lane play where things started to turn around, where they tried to go all in, tried to blow up the Oriana, then things just got turned around sideways, and then it just snowballed from there. But until that point, Young Generation was looking very good, and that goes back to Null. The big thing that I want to see is we've had completely different night and day performances from him. His first game on Syndra, a little bit shaky. His 1v1 out kills on Caps, much better. So we need to see more of the Fnatic Young Generation and less of the KLG Young Generation. Yeah, but unfortunately, they're playing up against KLG. you got to think they've learned a few lessons. Maybe you can shock some of the performance on early up to World's Nerves, if you will. But things change up a little bit for this team, especially with Nocti up in the top lane, because he is the guy that got them the wins they needed to even qualify for Worlds. They had to reverse sweep their way in, and Bren was on the losing side of those. This is a very different style of player. Yeah, and, and I want to really underline this topic. I know that a lot of what is defining Young Generation is the conversation around Gigabyte Marines, but they are their own identity, and they are their own team, and it's actually an upset for them to even make it here as the GPL second seed. You know, coming in, uh, Ascension was the big favorite team. They reverse swept them. They decided to uh, disrupt and come into it. So while Gigabyte Marines are kind of leading the charge and everyone knows that team and everyone grapples to their success, Young Generation, things have been a lot more turbulent. Uh, and so they're still just trying to find their own identity and their own footing. And that does start with Nocti up into that top lane. Uh, much wider champion pool, much more diversified player. Uh, and with Young Generation trying to play these carry-oriented top laners like the Renekton, it does help to have a, uh, a more consistent top laner up there. Yeah, stable, I think, is definitely a way I'd like to put it. And of course, you know, they can put him on things like the Gallia. We saw what Rerus was able to do on that champion last game and you know that might just be exactly what they need to take a victory here to try and get one back they need to be able to get win to stay alive remember they can really only force tiebreakers at this point they got to be able to start winning every single one they've got left of course it's definitely tough when you're in a group with Fnatic uh, even though they had a better performance against that team yeah it was uh, much closer that said Fnatic's composition was made to kind of scale up late but it kind of a, yeah. a little bit of a misstep when it came towards the mid game but it goes again to the individual talents on the young generation roster they do get a lot of scrim time with the gigabyte marines I know I just gave this whole speech like no they're their own, own person. Team, but they scrim them a lot. But they scrim them a lot. Uh, and you can see that in the individual talents, you know, uh, Vietnam, massive voice, um, massive player base, and a lot of that talent starts to bleed forward. We have someone like SOFM running around in my region. Oh, yeah. Levi made his big debut on the international stage. And specifically, I know I've been talking a lot about the top lane, but the AD carry, Big Poro, uh, or excuse me, Big Coro for this team is actually a guy to watch for. Absolutely. Now we're into picks and bans already. We haven't talked as much about KLG, but this is a team that's been looking pretty stable themselves, even at a one-on-one one record. You start off by banning the Rek'Sai and the Syndra. Fresh follows suit on the other side. The nice thing about uh, Chaos Latin Gamers is how they've diversified their style over the course of 2017. They used to be the big, slow, you know, moving the chains, 35, 45 minute games, which makes them very stable in terms of their late game macro shot calling. But on the back half of their split, they started to speed things up, show that other side of aggression and, and get early game snowballs rolling for them. So they have a lot of tools. They now just need to prove that they can do it on an international stage. Yeah, well, they've already proved it once against Young Generation. We'll see if they'll be able to do it again. Another jungler gets banned away. It's the Elise. And uh, for YG's side, Callista's off the board. The last band coming through is going to be Sejuani. So Jungle Pool actually kind of hit pretty hard here. We'll see if KLG want to pick up a quick one for Tier Wolf. And that's something that's pretty unique about Young Generation coming to this tournament. We haven't seen a ton of, you know, hyper-aggressive junglers. We've seen a couple of Lee Sins popping their head up. Yeah, everyone likes the Jarvan, but I feel like he's more of a hybrid. And as the warrior junglers and the more aggressive junglers start to rotate back into form, uh, that's where a lot of power goes back to Venus. So I like the fact that they're denying him the Rex Eye, denying him the Elise. Yeah, but if Venus is definitely definitely putting in some serious damage. I feel like Tearwolf's gonna be more like Mars because at this point, he does a lot of damage in the early game himself and he's gonna have a chance if he ends up being the one on the J4. Now, Young Generation get a chance to pick themselves up the Lover's bot lane and they do, but KLG instantly respond with a Kog'Maw 
and that Galio. And we're not even going to pretend anymore. Galio is probably going up to the top lane. That's where he's really been situated. Uh, Matsuraya would be perfectly fine picking that up. He looked great on the Cho'Gath, so obviously can turn on the tanks, but it could still technically be a flex pick. Yeah, technically, of course. And we could say the same thing about the Jarvan, I suppose, right? But this is all the makings of a good old protection comp, and you get the big front line. People can't really get in touch with the Kog'Maw anymore, and he's just pew-pewing. But it does leave the Cho'Gath open, so Nocti's going to get a chance on that one. So either feeling that they understand what the matchup's going to be and comfortable for Nocti to take the Cho'Gath, or just actually trying to deny that for Mathra if they already have the Galio, they don't also want to give off this Cho'Gath, who was able to solo kill Renekton yesterday. Yeah, that was a, a little bit of an eye-opener for sure as that happened. And now we continue to see jungle bans from the side of KLG. It's Gragas off the board for Venus. That's been a favorite of his. <laughs> get this jungler out of here. And now we're just trying to deny any sort of power from the Juggermaw composition. Get rid of the big Ardent sensor supports. Yeah, Lulu, Janna both removed and Nidalee also banned away by KLG. So the definitely team sticking to targeting one role on either side. Yeah, I actually really like the fact that they're giving Venus so much respect. Uh, again, Young Generation are one of those teams that slot in that they like to play more of the aggressive oriented junglers. Nidalee certainly comes to mind. Lee Sin, like I said earlier, also comes to mind. Yeah, well, once the envelope has been pushed, as you like to put it, he's going to be falling back on one of those. And Lee Sin coming in, we're going to expect some early plays out of that for sure. And it's back over to KLG to round out their composition. What do you see from them here? Well, we need to figure out where all of these flex picks are going to go. Um, it's obviously not going to be Galio support now that Alistar is being hovered right there and locked in. I love me some Alistar. He's been banned way too much for my preference here. And wow, okay, we need it on an Ardent Sensor somewhere, and it looks like we're going to get it in the mid lane. All right, so Plugo picks up the Karma, and now we get to see the shuffle around as the last pickup from the young generation will be coming in. They still need themselves a mid laner. Theoretically, he still doesn't know for sure what he's going to be facing. Uh, Right now in the LPL, they're scrimming or they're playing a lot in solo queue Karma top lane, specifically into Cho'Goth. So that could still be a Karma top. Yeah, so I think it's a pretty safe bet to just say, forget it, give me Corky. I don't care what I'm up against, I can handle it. So Nocti, he's somebody that can definitely handle a wide variety of things as well. But I think you have to expect that this is where the Galia is going to be. Okay, but there we go. Now, I talked about the Ardent Sensor. Naturally, it's not super comfortable for Alistar to build that one, so it's probably going to be given over to the response of Karma, who can look for that Athene's Ardent Sensor type of build that they've also seen on the Nidalee. Yeah, and you can tell both these teams are going to be going all in on the global plays, a couple of teleports in the mid lane, as well as, of course, what Galio can get done. We saw a master class in that the last time around, but both these teams, very different style of composition, played to a very specific draft phase that they wanted for themselves. Looks like for KLG's side, it'll be all about that Kog'Maw in the later stages of the game. Everything built around it, but it does seem a little bit more rounded from YG. Uh, yeah, I call it again bridging uh, or bridging points of power. The fact that you have the Lee Sin, he can take over the early game. He's then handing the baton to Corky in the mid game, who then throws it over to Zaya into the late game. Uh, it's about where you attack now. Cho is notoriously fragile in the early game. Yes, it's only a Galio, but he is working in tandem with the Jarvan. So I would like to see Young Generation at least give some respect for Nocti to get out of the, the danger zone and into where Cho'Gath is pretty much unmovable from his lane. Yeah, well, Nocti definitely knows a few things about being bullied in the early game. That was one of the ways they were able to find wins in their qualification for Worlds. Just kind of let him sit under tower and survive being wailed on. I wonder if Tier Wolf decides to take a trip up there all the same as we load up onto Summoner's Rift. That's always the question when you watch Chaos Latin Gamers. Where are they going to send their hyper-aggressive jungler? Exactly. What is Tier Wolf going to do? He is the big vocal guy for this team. Um, they talk. I've talked a lot about or talked a lot to them about what do you guys think is your primary strength? And I get the same answer every single time. Communication. You know, this team, when it was formed in spring, they didn't expect to make it to Worlds. They were just looking at like long-term development, you know, surviving relegations, not falling down again, trying to fix some of the structural problems that they felt were, were in their team and build them up for, for, you know, not today, but tomorrow. And then, the communication started to come together. Tearwolf stepped up, Plugo being that, that veteran in the mid lane, uh, you know, really stepping up his performance, and then everything came together for KLG, and suddenly in summer, they shifted gears and they decided, hey, we can actually go the distance. Yeah, and here they are on the world stage getting to play a little bit of cowbells. This is nice for KLG to come back from, yeah, as you said, the relegation zone four months ago. What a journey it has been for this team to find themselves now in Wuhan. The redemption story, really, for them, and now 
not just proving that, hey, this is our first appearance at Worlds, but we deserve to be here. We are the best that this region has to offer, and we can go that distance. Yeah, story a little bit different, of course, for young generation, because, as you said, living perennially in the shadow of the Gigabyte Marines, they want to you know, find their own identity, or at least demonstrate their own identity. Of course, they definitely still subscribe to some of the strong points that the Gigabyte Marines had to offer, but Big Coro is always the one we're looking at, as opposed to the jungler, Venus a little bit more on the supporting role. Yeah, I mean, Big Coro just has this uh, this reputation. Um, Gigabyte Marines coach Tinikan, I talk a lot to him. He says that Big Coro, he's been working with the player for about two years now, is the guy to watch. And this is, you know, the coach that discovered someone like SOFM, discovered Levi's talent, trained those guys up. And he says, no, 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 Big Coro, this is the next big player coming out of Vietnam. We'll see if he's able to stand up and deliver for sure. Of course, Zaya Rakan, he's definitely set up for success. And we talked a lot about Tier Wolf and what he can get done early. But facing him down, Venus, Lee Sin, that's what you want to do. That's what you need to do. Uh, because your effectiveness will wane the longer the game goes on regardless. And you got to think that's what KLG will want anyways. But it's also about setting the expectations of what Tier Wolf actually brings to the team. This isn't, you know, a, a 1v1 dueling oriented jungler. Yes, he, he can be that carry. Yes, he is very aggressive. I've seen a lot of LPL Jarvins over the years. But it's about how he plugs into his team, specifically with Plugo. Uh, the more time that Tier Wolf is spent roaming around with Plugo, the more time that these guys get unlocked and they're able to, you know, double team either uh, the side of the map or an invade jungle, that's where KLG find a lot of their success. So just watch how Tier Wolf moves around Plugo and how Plugo moves around Tier Wolf. Yeah, for the time being, Plugo or Tier Wolf rather is moving around Venus and he's finding Nocti making his way down as Venus says, Thank you very much. I'll take the leash on the red. And unfortunately, that does throw a wrench into Tier Wolf's plans, it means that his jungle is going to be a little bit slower. You can already see him level two and he's trying to compensate for that by grabbing the Rift Scuttler. Oh, Venus might not even let him get away with it here. Level two to level three. Oh dear. And he doesn't have his smite, so he can't just turn and burn it. So giving a lot of respect to this Lee Sin pick, which, you know, I like Tier Wolf. There's no reason to throw away an early game on, you know, a risk scuttler. Yeah, and they do have very late game, right? This is a Kogma composition. You're gonna be building Arden Sensor on your mid lane. So for the time being, it's okay to see a little bit of early pressure rather than giving up a lot of kills and allowing that snowball to happen. And Venus understanding that he can do this because he does have the pressure in the top lane in the mid lane, but maybe his luck runs out. Yeah, I was gonna say Tier Wolf says enough is enough. Hello. I'm gonna fight you this time. It's a battle of double buffs, but I don't know if Tier Wolf wants to keep going. Flugo wasn't quite in range to respond. We'll check back in with the bottom lane. Fix and Slow already stopped up under tower. We saw a little bit of early game harassment on Fix. He's already healed back up to full, but unfortunately, Slow can't say the same. Alan can be pretty frisky, though, underneath that tower. Does need to be a little bit careful about how that interaction with Alistair is going to work. Yeah. Uh, you never know if Slow is going to turn on the aggression. He is known as a more of a playmaking oriented support. Yeah. Although Pallet on a playmaker support of his own definitely can make things happen pretty quickly. That's a nice double knockup. Pallet's already going to be out. Fix can't really do a whole lot of damage early on, just sitting on the door and shield. And Tier Wolf is having a hard time even from Nowell here. Lugo goes in for a little bit of relief effort, but maybe he wishes he didn't. Hey, young generation just have Tier Wolf's number. They understand where a, a lot of the pieces of KLG start fitting together, that it starts with that jungler, and they are just throwing everything and the kitchen sink into this guy's jungle, contesting wolves, contesting raptors, now looking at stealing his Krug camp. The guy has a family. Yeah, and unfortunately, they're going to go hungry right now. Deer Wolf does not have much he can do inside this jungle. It also means that he has a clear gank path down bottom. Now, uh, there's no vision for KLG into that tri brush. So if Venus retains his health, which he is going to smite, he can feel comfortable looking for a gank behind Ali. Oh, he might just be able to do it, too. They're pushed up. He's going to walk into Jarvan, though. I think Venus is just going to exit over the wall, use the blast cone to escape. Yeah, they see him. I was about to say, maybe he'll go for the spicy 1v1, but I feel like that's not going to go well for him with slow and fix nearby. Definitely not with a back on Jarvan. Yeah, that's fair. He's already got an upgrade. You see the farm differential, of course, because Venus has pretty much been living inside of that jungle for a while, but now his own is going to start setting back up. They see Jarvan hanging around. And, of course, the ward in the river brush. Back to mid lane. We haven't talked too much about this, but it's already been a decent gold lead built up, or a CS lead built up for Naul. You see Plugo had already had to spend his flash to just get away from the 2v1 earlier on trying to save Tier Wolf's jungle. Unfortunately, I feel like it is going to be a bit of a free lane for Corky, unless that happens. Yep. Up Jarvan. Okay, Mantra Q, Tier Wolf on the way. There's the slow flag dragon, flash away. Naul turns it back with the Gatling gun, and Tier Wolf can't get anything else done. He does take another inner flame to the face. But that's now both flashes down for the mid laners, so right for the picking for the junglers, and it's going to be uh, the wash and repeat. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's return ganks, but that is a little bit of a quick turnaround time, and Tier Wolf can't quite take it. 
especially not with Nocti hanging around. He even made the trip from top lane. And that's twice now that Nocti has been able to unlock himself from his lane and add, uh, you know, benefit pressure to whatever his mid laner or his jungler are trying to do. And he's keeping up uh, fairly even in CS. Yeah, okay. Fix already getting some damage back out onto Big Coro. and now the jungle. Yeah, we're going to get a little bit more action up towards that mid lane, but there's still a lot of auto attacks flying down to the bottom. It looks like Tearwolf and Plugo actually kind of got forced back in. There's a lot of vision placed down, and Venus might have wanted to fight that. But it did force Galio to also respond, which means that Nocti gets even more time alone. He is pushing in a big creep wave, uh, but is retaining the CS lead. Just a little bit of a smidgen of a CS lead. Yeah, but this is where it starts to happen. The Galio just hits level six. Now he's got his ultimate available to try and get into those fights a little faster. And that's not something Nocti can quite match. He's got a teleport, but it's not the same. But that does mean that he's just going to pressure forward, keep the Galio locked in. He also has, you know, multiple ways to disrupt if it does come to a TP off as opposed to a, uh, what, hero's entrance off. Mm. Yeah, I guess one, one is only one way. Uh, yeah, I think, Lift off? I think you could just say standoff, and most people would understand what you're saying, Frosk. Um, no, I'm thinking about, like, his, his jump up. Oh, it is a lift off. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you meant matching TPs. Galio never skips late day. His no, legs he does. are huge. And he's definitely squad goals for sure. Mansoraya, though, is making use of his roam pressure. He knew that Nocti was back into the base, and so he pressured the way forward, lost vision, although I think he was spotted out by the ward in the ward that he's walking over right now. So uh, young generation should have some idea that he's placed deep vision down around that red buff that will be spawning. Yeah, they have a lot of river vision of their own, but it's going to be difficult for YG kind of push back, especially in this bottom side fix is having a field day, in all honesty. They haven't had a whole lot of jungle attention bought, but the Kog'Ma, you know, that is the late game game plan, and he's been doing just fine. Yeah, and, and Fix is a big name right now. I think that he's kind of a standout AD carry for his region personally in watching him. The thing is, is he's very young, and he doesn't quite understand uh, when it's safe to do things. And so sometimes he puts himself in a little bit of questionable decisions. But at the same time, you know, you have to congratulate him of having that bloodthirst. It's it's pretty hard to train that into a player. You would almost rather that they have it instilled into them and then teach them how to rein back the aggression. Now, that is exactly the recipe for an AD carry, for sure. Now, Pallet, he's stepping a little far forward, not necessarily respecting what Slow could do. Still only on level 5, so no quickness. And Nocti is going to steal away. A little bit of a snack attack on the blue buff there. Yeah, feeling really comfortable because Nal had pressure on Karma. Naturally, the second rotation of blue buff is going to be handed over for Karma. So if she's unable to uh, roam over, it means that it's not being prepared for her. Gives him the go-ahead that, hey, no one's probably here. I can probably just snack, walk away. Yeah. Oh, hate to eat and run, but apparently that's what he does. Now, Noel, back into mid lane, level 8 to level 7 advantage on this Corky. And you mentioned, of course, the free lane, maybe not necessarily when the junglers are involved, but in the 1v1 situation, it's going to be hard for Plugo to really match, especially when he's going to be building towards that Ardent sensor. Hold on. Tier Wolf. Ooh, Sonic Wave. Just a hair's breadth away trying to set up a trap there. And yeah, you're absolutely right. It's just going to be pushing waves back and forth. The thing, though, is that if Nal's feeling confident that he can out-trade or trade around the Karma, uh, that he's going to be pushing forward aggressively and then looking for those avenues when he has package to make roams. And that's when things are going to get explosive for uh, probably this game. I mean, there's so much dive potential. Nah, I'm thinking about it. I was like, there's so much dive potential bottom. But like, do you really want to dive in Alistar? Probably not. I mean, if he gets to the Kog'Maw, I guess it's worth. I guess we'll find out He's as Venus still hanging around. Barrier heal. Yeah, that's true. Tearwolf, okay. Oh, he finds Noel and Venus kick back into Pallet. Oh, he thought his own neighborhood was safe, but not anymore. So the play still stands. They wanted to go bottom. I was questioning if he wanted to dive the Alistar. It doesn't matter if you find the jungler alone on the Krug camp, but the same mentality didn't involve the package, but did get that Corky with the free roam. Because again, it's just pushing back and forth in this mid lane, and Corky gets inside track. Yeah, once again, we get to see it. So Tear Wolf, a little bit of a hesitation. And well, as soon as he throws the flag and drag in, uh-oh, kick back into the first blood. Yeah, and frankly, this is just a great read from Young Generation and understanding what makes KLG strong, which is starting with Tear Wolf. If you lock him down, you slow down the communication, you slow down one of the primary shot callers of the team, and suddenly they start to flounder around or fall apart. And this is gold lead, and as well as the Dragon, already a little more significant than what we saw the last time they met. Remember, they did build a modest lead in the opening game of the World's Play-In stage, but, well, at Gate 3, I mean, but they just didn't really do much after that, and there was a lot of misplays individually. But a big problem was the misplays that were happening top lane, and that is a completely different story this time around. Nocti is up, what, 20, uh, 20 CS, pretty strong, feeling very confident. He's now at the stage as Shogoth, where he's never going to be moved from this top lane. He's going to be feeling very safe, very confident, and all he needs to do is keep tabs on Galio. 
have the wave constantly pressured forward, have the vision underneath him so he can do that and just make sure that Galio is not able to impact the rest of the map. Yeah, and he's mobile enough to be able to match. Not only does he have the teleport, of course, up to Bill, when neither top laner wanting to pull the trigger on that summoner, but he starts off at finishing out the boots. So he's really able to make a little move faster in the Galio, not quite matching it, of course, and he might not skip leg day, but apparently he forgot to go to the Nike store. Those are some Pumas. He's, he's an Adidas guy. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. But 11 minutes in, we've only got First Blood. It's on YG. They've got a lot of tools in their kit, but I feel like the game plan for Chaos Latin Gamers, of course, is always going to be this Kog'Maw, and if he doesn't get shut down, he's happy. Well, it's also against Azaya, though, especially in tandem with Rakan. This duo will snowball so well into the late game. Uh, yeah, it's hard to match the true range, reach, and damage output of a Kog'Maw, but Zaya gets pretty close. Not to mention they'll be able to start closing gaps pretty well. And, and I like what Venus has been able to do, not just in shutting down Tearwolf in this game so far, but in denying him so much farm, getting a whole lot of vision, they can spot out any aggressive attempts from KLG. And they know that there's not going to be a whole lot of aggression coming out of the mid. You got a Karma, the Galio up top is going to try and push and hold lane. So bottom lane's the only one you really got to worry about. Yeah, and it's really understanding the fact that there's not a lot of kill pressure there. You know, kind of miss the window to attack the lane uh, or attack the top side when both those top laners are fragile. You're looking at Rakan or Alistar, so it's not going to feel great great to go down there unless you're bringing multiple members, which uh, looks like they're trying to set up right now. There so it was just about invading and attacking Tearwolf and trying to isolate that 1v1 jungle matchup. Yeah, well, they're about to isolate a lot more than that. Corky on the Trinity Force power spike. Still need to be really respectful and not get overzealous in this. It's still an Alistar, he's got his ultimate, so I th think you focus on the tower instead of looking for the dive. Yep, trying to play the objective focus game. Of course, they're going to bring in some backup as well with Venus still sitting here. He's just going to make the wrap around and trying to get a few more wards in, pinging that they don't see here, Wolf, so they don't feel comfortable going any further. Exactly that. You can see the Jarvan was actually backing at the inner tower, so everyone knew it was up. Everyone was kind of testing the waters about what might happen bot lane, but in the end, we don't want to uh, gamble or throw away something on just a risky bot lane dive. Yeah, this is the development we're starting to see out of YG. I mentioned earlier on in the game that the last time they met, it seemed like the team a little a little fidgety, a little nervous maybe, not making the right plays always at the right time, but this is a lot cleaner League of Legends. It's much more like we saw up against Fnatic, despite them not being able to pick up the win there. We questioned what type of team would show up on this game. So far, it's looking like the better young generation. Well, it makes sense that they would slow down a little bit just naturally because of their composition. They're still waiting for you know bigger power spikes. Yes, Corky has his, uh, his Trinity Force, but he wasn't able to utilize the package very aggressively. But right now, it's continuing to exploit the jungle. There's not a lot of opportunity and kill pressure in the individual lanes, but like I said, just keep blitzing into Tear Wolf's face. Yeah, and just keep grabbing that gold lead a little bit slower every time. 2,000 is the lead they have now, and you know, the more you do, the more you starve out the jungler, the better you can actually do once the map starts opening up to try and force those fights, because he's not going to be on the same level. And the only concern then is that, yes, they didn't give a lot of attention into trying to shut down the Kog'Ma, but if they're confident enough that come the 5v5s or come mid and late game, that, you know, Venus can fly into the back and can find that Kog'Ma, or, uh, you know, maybe Cho'Gath flashes forward and just noms and there's zero counterplay to that type of maneuver. So it could just be that it's not a bad read from Young Generation to try to shut down Kogma, but they're just confident enough that if it goes late game, they're better. Yeah, uh, and when you have a composition that pretty much has one clear win condition, it does paint a giant target on its back as opposed to the multiple tools that Young Generation have. The Corky is still going to do a serious amount of damage. You mentioned the Cho'Gath. I mean, there's not that many champions that you build full tank on and then just, okay, I'm going to blow somebody up. It's great to play against. Just it's super, super, super interactive. I love the counterplay. Yeah. Well, um, to be fair, Young Generation's other top laner faced that off the last time. Montarayo was the one that had the Cho'Gath, and uh, he started to do that to a Renekton. That guy should never get Cho'Gath again. It was just <laughs> disgusting what he was able to output against Ren. Uh, here we go. And no, we don't. Wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah, I mean, this is what you're talking about, lack of kill pressure, right? Like, you can put the Karma Leash on, but at the end of the day, Noel can just jet off. Flying out. And slow, he does have Jarvan behind him, so you can already see that he wants to be a bit more aggressive, but trying to pick which target. You want the Zaya, but then Rakan's just going to go in, try to protect her, create space for her. Yeah. I feel like Fix has got to be a little careful, though. You talked about him being the, the slightly maybe over-aggressive AD carry, and if he's not behind the Alistar, you might find yourself face first into a Rakan ultimate. But they need to pull the trigger now, KLG, and make this play happen bottom, because Venus and Nal are going to be on the way. They're probably going to shove one more wave and then make the rotation bot. So the window is closing for them to have a numbers advantage here. Yeah, and the map is opening up right now with that tower knocked down in the mid lane. You can see Nal just having a pretty good time, and of course, so far, 
he's pretty much par for the course in the mid lane. We're starting to see him really step up, especially after their first performance. I mean, that said, it, it was, a, a, frankly, an easy matchup for him. He just pretty much did his job. It's now how he transfers that into the mid game because he is the big power spike. In fact, already he's just like Trinity Force, Infinity Edge. Most expensive build, let's go. Yeah, and he's even got the boots just to give a little bit extra mobility starting things off. And when you know it's 10 seconds and another Infernal Drake, we've really been graced by a whole lot of uh, Dragon RNG this world. Yeah, and unfortunately because, what, it's the Rage Blade rush from Kogma, it feels really uncomfortable at this point in the game. Like, the Infernal is spawning, he needs to make his back, and yeah, you can argue that maybe the backs are mistimed, um, but they don't want to fight this because it feels really bad to fight when you have your AD item, your AP item, and you're just, like, in between any of those points. Bit of an awkward time, right? But for YG, he talked about them kind of building up each other and having one of those compositions that sort of, you know, it supports its own scaling. It's a smooth curve up, and it's working perfectly for them right now, and there's not a whole lot of chance to contest, so that's two Infernal, 16% bonus AD and AP for the Young Generation squad. Uh, yeah, and that's going to be devastating because it is a Corky, it is a Zaya, so that double Infernal will do so much work for them in about, you know, 10 minutes. So any sort of gold lead that KLG might match is just going to be out outramped by the double Infernal and what that offers in terms of, you know, power advantage. Now, on the other side of that, the next dragon is Mountain, still very valuable. It'll spawn around 22 minutes, and Kog'Maw will actually be in a perfect spot to fight, as well as because the Ardent Sensor will be completed by Karma, and he'll also have his second item. Well, we will have to see the game state at that point, right? That's still some minutes away, and Young Generation, I mean, if they can keep this ball rolling right now, this has got to be such a good confidence booster for them, because remember, despite the fact that we saw improved performance from this team over their debut, they're still 0-2 down. They have to win out to have any chance of moving on to the next round. And so far, so good. But one mistake can start to turn the tide. But it's about where those mistakes will happen. You can see, again, Tier Wolf. He's been repeatedly down into the bottom lane. I feel like they're just waiting for Big Koro and Pallet to make the rotation towards top side. Again, without Infernal, there's not a lot of reason to be bottom. They probably want to uh, move their objective priority towards that Rift Herald. And he's just trying to catch them out of position so they can use the Jarvan to burn down that tower trade. So KLG understand that they don't want to fight right now, uh, that it's not in their advantage. Uh, they just want to try to trade objectives. Yeah, Mantaraya knows that better than a lot. So seeding off the tower pressure in the top because he knows that the rest of his team they're in the bottom side. However, there's a teleport coming in. Young Generation, they do want to fight, pulling the trigger, getting the Rudolph on too, and in comes a Corky. It's a special delivery, and I don't think Fix wanted to ring that bell. It's going to be one tower taken down by Venus. Meanwhile, the fight is on 5v4 in the bottom, but YG, they look like they're getting the better of it. One more knock up, but Nocti is not perturbed by that. See, going back in, Inspire, and there's a Root on Mantaraya. Yeah, but they retain their health bars. You know, Kogma wasn't killed, and Galio threatening the dive. Oh dear, Nocti, he's gonna give it, or is he still staying alive through the root? Gets the eat on Mantaraya, flashes away to the safety of behind the rest of his team, and now KLG in trouble. And again, I'm not gonna blame KLG. I agreed with what they were trying to do, but young generation, they understood we are stronger now, we wanna fight, and it doesn't matter if we fight 5v5 or 4v5. Corky flew in, they forced KLG off the tower, and meanwhile, Lee Sin was able to pick up top tower and and Rift Herald. Yeah, that's got to be a great thing for the jungle. Oh, I'm Lee Sin. I'm supposed to do things early game. I guess I'll just go and play PvE while my team hard carries. And that's just so unfortunate. Like, if you're a KLG fan, that feels bad because you're like, yes, I completely agree with the team. You know, they're not strong enough to look for the 5v5, so they're going to abuse the numbers advantage and just try to trade tower for tower. But young generation are like, nah, man, you are going to fight us and we are going to win. And unfortunately, KLG, you know, it looks good initially. Fix is able to disengage. He saved. The Kog'Maw didn't initially die. Like, perfect. KLG are going to get the trade back, but then unfortunately, Galio just overreaches slightly, and the tower does so much work for Young Generation. Yeah, I cannot believe Nocti didn't die. Turns around, gets a nom off. I guess at the end of the day, the Chogad just a little bit bigger than the Galio. Catching what? Uh, three members there with his rupture. Oh, yeah, that too. And at and, and this point, he's not getting any smaller. He's got the Warmogs completed, steals away Raptors. Tear Wolf still doesn't own his own jungle. This guy's having a bad time. He's what, 68 to 109, it's not fun. Yeah. And now the teleport being forced out. Oh boy, fix. Yeah, can't really spot him back. Nocti just hanging on and pushing them continually. But this is multiple members for KLG just trying to pressure young generation on the bottom side of that. Meanwhile, the Rift Herald is still in possession of Venus. Uh, if he gets this wave prepped and if Zaya and Rakan actually rotated down, you know, they could just exploit other areas on the map while KLG are busy down here. Yeah, but YG, they find themselves a little bit outgunned. Fix gets one kill on the board. That's the first for Chaos Latin Gamers. Nocti, let's see how tough he can hang under this tower. This time, no help is coming, so get in the pit. 
And looks like Nocti is going to try to buy a little bit of time with his health bar. Fix gets two, but look what's happening up top. Exactly. And this is the play that KLG were trying to get. They will get the tower. But like I said, while uh, all of the attention is being pulled bottom, it's just an easy rift tail into an inner tower. And they're now sieging into the in hit. Yeah, much needed gold on the side of Fix. However, they're going to pay dearly for it because Mantaraya trying to hold on here finds another rift tail headbutting into that tower and they'll be able to clear it away but still that's some serious chip damage that young generation managed to bring and still a massive trade-up for young generation particularly around the baron control you know the creeps are going to get that far forward or that much farther forward down the top side of the map and now they just need to start moving and creeping in their vision after they take down mountain yep grabbing as much jungle as they can on the way out making out like bandits tear wolf is just uh, finding himself completely starved out this game just taking a look at the gold that he's got for himself compared to venus i mean he's down Almost 2,000, the man just can't catch a break. Now, the green light for KLG is the fact that, like I said, the 22-minute dragon is going to spawn. They are in a much more comfortable position to fight. They've got the two items completed on Kogma, the Hurricane, as well as the Rage Blade. The uh, Ardent Sensor and the Athenes are available for Karma. So before, when they stepped off of the Infernal Dragon, they understood, we're not strong enough to fight. Now, this time around, they can feel confident stepping to if they get their vision in place. It's still not going to be easy, though, because at this point, Nocti is nearly at raid boss status. So I feel like you're going to need more than one DPS to take him down, although doing a little damage there. Venus still in for the relief effort. And Slow and Plugo were waiting out in the brush, so a lot of investment from Chaos Latin Gamers up towards the top side. That means no one's there to defend now on the bottom. And it also means that no one's able to defend this Mountain Dragon. Mountain Dragon, yes, it takes a long time to go down, but he's one of the gentle giants of the Rift. So if now wants to take this tower, he can just solo Mountain afterwards. Yeah, pretty easily. And Mantaraya knows he can't really defend against the Corkster. That's going to be one shot taking it out. And he just keeps on pushing, actually. Yeah, Slot and Gamer is really giving ground over to Young Generation. Yeah, might as well. He knows that no one's going to come to stop him. Feels confident because he's got the ward on the Raptor camp so he can see exactly where Tear Wolf is on that Jarvan. And he's just going to continue to be a nu uh, nuisance. Speaking of nuisances, every time I think Tear Wolf has free jungle, someone steals something from him. This time it's Pallet. Oh, I feel bad for that guy. He's not, he's not getting a lot of gold. No, definitely He's falling not. on hard times. <laughs> Well, there's always next game, I suppose. But for the time being, there's still a lot of chances for KLG to come back into this. Gold down, Venus. Yeah. He's clearly still going to be able to affect, help them as far as utility goes and cataclysms and things like that. But for Young Generation, this is the time that they feel pretty confident, even though the Kogma has some kills, has some gold. KLG, they might get collapsed on here. Or will it be Young Generation that stepped too far forward? Pallet, he has to go quick. And it looks like Tyrwolf gets the pit on, but it doesn't matter. He's going to be jumping right back. Fix gets one kill to start things off. Now Ol just trying to look tasty as KLG on the chase. Living Artillery, one shot, two shot. Young Generation, there's Big Core right in the back. Nocti takes down Tyrwolf right off the end of it. Looks like two roots down. Slow's going to have to flash away. Plugo and Fix turn things out. Can they get the damage on Mantaraya? Trying to go for the dive under tower, but it's a shutdown as Big Koro does go big. And uh, as the dust settles right now, it looks like Young Generation get the better of it but it looks real tense for a moment. Yeah, Fix tried to go Super Saiyan, tried to carry his team, but it was really Nocti, and now with that Warmox kicking in, are they moving over to Baron? Well, they might just do. That's some serious death timer still, even though it's only 24 minutes in. Young Generation, they know they've got the firepower to burn this one down. Tearwolf still five seconds from respawn. Mantaraya trying to disrupt, but I don't think it's going to happen. Couple more auto attacks, gets the root. Taunt doesn't really matter. No, even finds the APM to spam his buttons and get himself some swag at the end of that one. So smited down Baron at 24 and a half minutes for Young Generation. Exactly. Successful team fight into the Baron, and this is a huge swing of power for Young Generation. If we take a look back at the fight, again, I understand what KLG are trying to go for. They feel strong. They have the Ardent Sensor. They have the two-item power spike. I understand exactly why they set up for this. It's unfortunate that Fix just can't go the distance, and a lot of that is on Nocti. He arrives later to the fight, but it's the fact of how he uses ultimate. He immediately kills Karma with the silence, then grabs Fix, does huge amounts of damage to him by just chomping on his face, and then zones Plugo and Fix away until the rest of his team is able to show up and clean up the back half. Yep. Very hectic fight inside of that jungle, but you can see a lot of the difference in itemization really helping YG put things away, not to mention a couple of dragons. That Jarvan pretty much died at the very end of it from the package Valk wake. I mean, he's he's pretty much got uh, cardboard armor, just like duct tape to him. Yeah. Fortunately, the uh, Demacian coffers are a little empty these days. 25 minutes in, Young Generation rocking a pretty significant gold lead, as well as the Mountain Dragon. Now it's finished up, and it looks like the next lane to push is going to be all of them. 
The easiest tower to secure is going to be that last standing uh, inner tower in the bottom lane, which is what Nal is setting up right now. And I expect that the mid lane will be shoved one more wave, and then the rest of his team will rotate down and join him. And it's simply because it's that much easier to threaten a dive. Yeah. Despite the fact that Fix is definitely starting to ramp up on this Kogma, he just can't do enough to try and push back the young generation. Firing now with three members and the Baron Empowered Minions on the inner in the mid. Down it'll go. 26 minutes on the clock. It looks like YG looking to close this one out soon. And such a relief for this team that started out their world's experience 0 and 2. If they can put this one away with a W in the books, they'll be pretty happy that they still have a chance now. Nocti tanking up three. Tearwolf jumps the pit, but I don't know if he wants this Thunderdome to go on. Nocti just gets a numb on, and Tearwolf having to back away. Rupture, flag, drag. They will be able to shut him down. Fix has got a fourth kill of his own. But what did they lose in return? It's the bot and hip tower. It's massive damage on the mid tower. And Venus is like, get out of here. Yeah. Young Generation not even bothering to fight his fight because they realize that KLG just can't push them back time and again, so base broken open on the bottom as well. But not breaking one of the inhibs is a pretty big deal for Young Generation. You know, if they had grouped up with Nocti, they decided that they wanted to apply the Baron in every single lane, try to apply so much pressure across map and split up KLG. Makes sense. They are a composition about the Kogma, so they want to be grouped up, but it leads to situations like this. Yeah, now unfortunately finding himself without a whole lot of allies, trusted that he'd be able to get out of harm's way and not the case this time around. Quick, they've killed the Corky, get to the base. Yeah, tag time. All right, big Coro and Pallet on the inhib. Teleport coming in and the rest of KLG coming. And I don't know if Young Generation's bottom lane will be able to get out of this one nice and safe, but they realize they might just be able to kill Fix before it happens. That is a lot of shields right there. And I don't know if YG can take this fight as the teleport's about to finish. Nocti comes in. It's a shutdown for Fix onto big Coro, but it's still a melee in the mid. And now Venus working his way through the last few hits of that tower as they decide to turn back in on the fight. Monteraya gets the charm, stun up onto two, looking for Nocti, and he just keeps tanking everything. Pallet is going to have to swap his way out as he's a little low on the health bar, but there's a front line right there to to clear away the rest of this inhib. With Kogma dead, there is no one to stop Nocti. He can sit there for as long as he wants. I mean, that was just the least in the recon. He's like, nah, guys, we got this. Just keep hitting the inhib. Big old Shogath, Adaptive Helm, Warmog's Armor, everything. He is very, very difficult for them to kill. I just love the fact that Young Generation just like double down. They're like, you know, we could fight as five, or we could just continue to throw our bodies at these inhibs. They do like to skirmish. One thing watching this team as they qualify for Worlds, they kind of thrive off uh, maybe pre-planned, but nonetheless very hectic fights that don't always have all 10 members of each team involved. And again, that makes sense when you look at KLG's composition. You don't want that comp to stand together as five and allow them to just, you know, buff up the Kogma with everything. Well, you saw those shields though, right? Exactly, if you split them up, then the Kogma becomes that much more fragile, or he's not in position, they don't have the appropriate wave clear, and you can start to pick things off or chip away at the base. All right, well, they might be able to chip away at a little bit more than Pallet's health bar. Still mobile enough on the Recon, so the Death Brush not entirely effective, but it does result in burning the quickness. Still without two inhibitors in the top and mid, the third's looking mighty tasty for Young Generation to try and push their way in. And now has got another package to deliver yeah, and you at can this time. See a lot of the ping, so they're just trying to flood or smother KLG's base, get all of these Super Creeps waves coming in at the same time that they're contesting this bot inhib. Yeah, playing it out nice and easy close things out. This would be great for Young Generation to try and get a W on the board, give them a chance to still qualify for the elimination stage. It's not but Nexus Towers left for Chaos Latin Gamers. Can they hold together? This is where we hold them. All right. I don't see no Pantheon, though, unfortunately. Chaos Latin Gamers are going to have to find something out of nowhere. 300 Spartans might be hiding behind that fountain. We'll see. Nocti getting the knock up. There's the Featherstorm coming out. A few speed ups, but there's no damage. They've already lost one Nexus turret. Tearwolf looking for Naul, but the rest of Young Generation turn forward. Venus going to get a kick off. Tearwolf gets the Thunderdome on, but it doesn't matter. Naul is still able to fire over the edge of the pit. Slow going in, gets a knockback, finding Pallet. Mantaraya makes a hero's entrance, and that's one kill to start off this fight. Fix but is Chaos Light Gamers, they've already found two. Fix is still looking massive right now, but is it going to be enough? Naul gets Mantaraya, and one by one, the protectors fall, and so does the Kogba. A double kill for Naul, and there's nothing but the base. 30 minutes exact on the clock. Young Generation staying alive and take the win over KLG. I mean, it was a 20k gold difference in the end, so Fix tried to do what he could, but he just couldn't go Super Saiyan enough as Young Generation just mow over Chaos Latin Gamers. Yeah, we're going to need a couple more episodes of training montage before that Kogma was going to be able to outscale. What a massive victory for Young Generation. And we've seen this team look a little bit better every single game they've played so far at Worlds. It's a long climb to try and make it to the elimination round. 
but they might just be able to do it. And Nocti is a huge upgrade, I feel. Rin really struggled against Mataraya up into that top lane. Nocti had no problems there, built up a CS lead, was able to constantly be applying pressure, diving into the, the jungle, stealing away the blue buff, executing perfectly in team fights, you know, getting into that back line, denying Fix the big dragon fight that they really needed to turn that game around. Yep. And it's a little bit of a heartbreaker for Chaos Latin gamers, and they were looking pretty solid on their first day of play, but it just wasn't quite enough, and now they find themselves in a one and two situation. Yeah, but I feel like that was more of like a draft thing. It's so hard. Chaos Latin gamers, they don't like best of five, or they don't like best of one. They prefer to be in a best of three or a best of five format. Again, the strength of that team is their conflict resolution, their ability to, to adapt, and their communication. So in these short bursts, you know, when they get one chance, one opportunity, and they fall short, that feels bad because they feel like they're not able to uh, exploit their greatest strength. Well, that'll be put to the test, I suppose, a little bit later today. But all the same, young generation, flipping it back for these guys. Long climb, but it's looking really good for them at the moment. Yeah, it's looking great. And again, huge credit to that top laner, Nocti. Yeah, it's just the Cho'Gath, so I'd love to see him on, you know, more champions to see if he can diversify that style, be a threat in more opportunities. But right now, thumbs up. Yeah, we're going to see a few more chances of that for sure. Now, to hear more about that YG win, we're sending it over to Trakos and the analysts. Rusty with a quick thumbs up, because he predicted correctly, YG coming in strong in the rematch. Off camera doesn't count. I wanted to, we didn't get a pregame mark, I couldn't actually say it, I thought that would go. Technically away. Mark is right, it, it does I not know. count. But the first thing I want to jump into is the pick and ban phase, because it does feel a little bit like, uh, I feel like there's a clear goal here for KLG, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean you have J4 Galio and Alistar, so you have a lot of playmaking tools. You have a Kogma and a Karma, so uh, you have one damage threat. And when you have a lot of dive tools and one damage threat, you probably want to force plays around that damage threat to get him some kills. Yep, certainly seems to be the case. Of course, you contrast that to our opponents, maybe a bit more well-rounded. Things do make a lot of sense still on both sides of the rift. One's a bit more one-dimensional, and you'd say that maybe Young Generation's comp's harder to execute upon, but still, they got the victory, they execute on the composition well enough. And I think the first thing we have to praise is that Nocti does look very solid on the top side of the map, and while he did not necessarily hard carry the game, he also was not a liability, and I think that was a big win for Young Generation. Yeah, they just need more stability, generally speaking, and he went up there by 20 minutes and he had a 30 CS lead at one point he had stolen the blue buff so overall he was still a net positive impact on the game as well as the fact that he wasn't making any mistakes in team fights and things yeah like the, that. Bi the big thing with Ren as well that we noticed is good and bad player of course but he also made these really crucial big mistakes that just outright lost games where Nocti looked stable looked solid every time he was caught he was actually making space for the rest of the map because they were pushing three lanes at once <laughs> all right creating a little bit of space well let's take a look at our first replay we can highlight yes he is kind of a high-risk player but also feels like KLG trying to play that strategy where they put everything on the bot side. Yeah, but this is coming 18 minutes in the game. This is super late. They had already accrued massive deficit from the top and mid, as well as the fact that they already lost their mid turret. So they go for this play from a gold deficit. It doesn't work. It's 4v5, and this is a terrible situation because up on the top side, Lee Sin is just working down the turret. He's going to grab a rift hurl on the back end of this, and KLG just feels so desperate to convert into anything here. And it shouldn't be a desperate situation for them because it is a 4v5. They've got three tanks. They've got the ability to dive these structures, but some Somehow, and in some way, the Cho'Gath holds on, flashes out at the last second. Yeah, I thought he was dead when he flashed out. I couldn't believe he was still alive after all that. He took a lot of damage. Rakan shield him, baby. Brings him home, brings him home. But I think the big thing, thing here for, uh, for me here is, ultimately, I feel like they could have done this play much earlier in the game on the side of Chaos on Gamers. Why, why did it take so long for them to try to force something like this? I think a big problem was there was, there was a lack of mid-pressure. The Karma was losing the matchup pretty heavily. He was down 30 CS, pushed into her turret, and there was this funny sequence where she would run forward, throw the tether on the Corky, Cork revalks away, and then she just goes back to, to wave clearing. And felt like it wasn't 100% certain on how they wanted to play the matchup. Should they have ganked it earlier? Mm -hmm. uh, Lee Sin also did a good job tracking J4 in the early game. Now, I do wonder if the Karma was picked simply because they wanted an Ardent Sensor user for the Cogmore and they already had the Alistar there so it was the last two picks and ultimately I think when you go for the Karma mid lane yeah you can still go on Arden Sensor. Athens is nice to have the heals but you need to have a second damage threat and so I think just changing that up being more damage oriented as your Karma things may have shifted or given more opportunities for the tanks to dive. And it feels very high risk to me at least to look for just that single damage threat in these contexts where we have seen a lot of games be decided in the early laning phase and the last time they played this matchup they were at a deficit so picking something like Karma that 
I feel like when it's used well is lane dominant and then transitions to a supportive role. Yet I will say that Chaos Light and Gamers do this to a fault because this is how they got here from their best of five finals. They play one threat compositions. They were just able to win with those locally and it feels like on the international stage maybe they need to just reassess that strategy. And it's the case. Well, ultimately when we look at our next play, we can see that with one damage threat, when he does get pressured out of the fight, very hard to execute. And this is just a situation where it's a nice setup on the side of KLG, being able to blow a pallet right away, uh, but then uh, they ch end up chasing the Corky a little bit too far out of the fight, which allows the fact that right now, uh, Young Generation has double Infernal Dragon, double Marksman to start winning this fight. Yeah, Fix just spends one too many seconds perhaps chasing the Corky for that final kill. Big Koro is also the member that we have to discuss on the side of YG. The amount of work that he did through all of that fight goes unnoticed until he just flashes forwards and takes apart that Kog'Maw. You can see both AD carries, at least in the damage charts, showing up, contributing to the team, and no surprise that the one threat composition, all the damage is on the Kog'Maw, sadly not enough to bring home those team fight wins. Unfortunately not, a little bit of a, like Rusty was saying, a little bit too little too late in that dragon fight. Potentially could have won it if it was cleaned up a little bit, but on the same time, Young Generation didn't play great either. They grabbed the Baron off the back of that. It's an easy steamroll from there. Still want to see them clean it up a little bit though, because they started playing the game of, I'm in the side lane, you're in the side lane, they kill one of us. We push on the other side. You don't necessarily need to die when you're trying to split the other team up like that. Yep, definitely. Tree could be cleaned up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, maybe play a little more back. They have to come to you anyway to get those objectives. But I think playing aggressively, that is something that I generally like to see. Just maybe not so much in this context. But now moving forward, both these teams are tied. One, two apiece. They've gone even in the head-to-head -head matchup. So there's a lot of potential for tiebreakers here. What do you think the adaptation looks like for Chaos Latin Gamers coming to the next game? I mean, for Chaos Latin Gamers, I feel like it's just reassessing their draft phase. We know that as individual players, they are good enough to get victories against this team that we just watched them lose to so just reassess that draft i think that's the big thing that the single threat is very difficult to pull off uh, i think it's fine to do if you are well versed in that play style of forcing plays around your damage dealer so while this comp i think on paper is fine for klg and the fact that they've fallen behind two games in a row versus young generation makes me feel like it's very risky to go for because you're not guaranteed to get kogma ahead well, we're gonna have to find out how they adjust young generation picked with their first one of the tournament let's see if rampage over in group d can do the same the ljl japan representatives face 1907 fenerbahce after the break Tier wolf. Okay. Oh, he finds Dowell and Venus. Kick back into Pallet. Galio threatening the dive. Oh dear, Nocti, he's gonna give it, or is he still staying alive through the root? Gets the eat on Mataraya. This time, no help is coming, so get in the pit. And looks like Nocti is gonna try to buy a little bit of time with his health bar. Fix gets two flash away. Plinko and Fix turn things out. Can they get the damage on Mataraya? Trying to go for the dive under tower, but it's a shutdown. Nocti just gets a numb on, and Tier Wolf having to back away. Rupture, flag, drag. They will be able to shut him down. YG can take this fight as the teleport's about to finish. Nocti comes in. It's a shutdown for Fix. Fix is still looking massive right now, but is it going to be enough? Now it gets Mataraya, and one by one the protectors fall, and so does the Kogma. A double kill for no, and there's nothing but the base. 30 minutes exact on the clock. Young generation staying alive.